Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're talking about the Hyundai Santa Cruz and why I think that it's not selling as well as Hyundai expected, and frankly, why it's not selling as well as its biggest competitor, the Ford Maverick. Before we get into this video, though, I do need to give a big shout out and thank you to the Murdoch Hyundai here in Linden, Utah. I am filming this video on their lot. With that being said, I did not ask permission to film this video. They do not endorse this video. They do not approve of this video whatsoever. Just have to make that clear. But I will still include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And if you do not know already, the Murdoch Hyundai here in Linden does not charge any sort of markups over MSRP whatsoever. Even at the peak of the pandemic, when every single dealer was charging over MSRP, they stuck to their guns. They did not charge any sort of markup. So it's a great Hyundai dealership to buy from if you're looking for a new Hyundai. With that being said, let's get into the video. Let's start things off by going over the sales figures with the Santa Cruz. Now, it was released in 2021 as a 2022 model year vehicle, which is pretty common. And in July, which was the month of release, they sold a whopping 81 units. Now, this is not because there wasn't enough demand. This is because it took a second to ramp up with production. And, well, they basically kept increasing month over month. And by the end of 2021, in December, they sold 3,000 Santa Cruzes. Now, if we fast forward to 2022, that's kind of where things peaked out because throughout 2022, for the most part, they sold anywhere from about 2,600 to about 3,000 units per month. They had a really good month in June where they sold 3,500 units. And then by the end of the year, again, they're around that 3,000 to 3,500 um, unit range per month. And then as of 2023, so far in January, they sold 2,600 units. And then in February, they sold about 2,800 units. If we add up all these sales figures, then what we can see is that in quarter three of 2021, they sold about 3,000 Santa Cruz's. Quarter four saw about 7,000 sales. And then throughout 2022, what we can see is, well, the first quarter, 8,400 units, quarter two, 9,800 units, quarter three, 8,600 units, and finally quarter four, 9,600 units. So the trend with the Santa Cruz is that they're going to sell anywhere from about mid 8,000s to maybe 10,000 units in a given quarter. Now let's compare this to the Santa Cruz's biggest competitor, which is the Ford Maverick. It's a small unibody vehicle with a truck bed, just like the Santa Cruz. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit more later. But anyways, sales figures with the Maverick. So we don't have month to month sales figures like with the Santa Cruz. We just have quarterly sales figures. Quarter three of 2021 saw 506 units sold. Again, the Maverick was released around the same time as the Santa Cruz. It was actually released a little bit later. Quarter four saw over 12,000 sales. And then in 2022, quarter one saw almost 20,000 sales. Quarter two saw about 20,000 sales. Quarter three saw a dip down to 13,000 sales. And then quarter four saw over 22,000 sales. So those numbers prove that the Fort Maverick Maverick is currently selling at a rate of about 2x compared to the Santa Cruz, but the numbers don't exactly show everything because if you go to a Hyundai dealership right now, chances are you'll see several Santa Cruzes available for sale. Whereas if you go to a Ford dealership, unless it's a used Ford Maverick, you're not really going to see any brand new Ford Mavericks available for sale. And that's because the Ford Maverick is completely sold out. And the thing that's you know preventing Ford from selling more Mavericks is frankly production. If Ford could build more Mavericks, they would sell more Mavericks. Now, I don't know the exact market cap of the Ford Maverick, like where sales would start to drop off, but I feel like it's pretty safe to say that Ford could sell probably another 2x on top of what they are already selling with the Maverick per quarter. So if they're roughly doing about, you know, 20,000 units per quarter, I think 40,000 units per quarter is well within the realm of possibility for the Maverick. So let's quickly take a look at the Hyundai Santa Cruz or rather Santa Cruz's and try to figure out this whole situation. So let's start things off by talking about the powertrain options you can get in the Santa Cruz and kind of compare that to the Ford Maverick. So the first or actually the upgraded powertrain you get with the Santa Cruz is a turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder it's under the hood of this particular Santa Cruz. It is paired to an eight speed dual clutch automatic. It puts out 281 horsepower and then 311 pound feet of torque. Now the base powertrain for the Santa Cruz is under the hood of this particular Santa Cruz. It is a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic. Now this is not a dual clutch like in the turbo Santa Cruz, it's a regular eight speed automatic. And that puts out 191 horsepower and then 181 pound feet of torque. And I figure I should also show fuel economy with them. So the naturally aspirated engine gets 22 around town and then 26 on the highway and that's with front wheel drive. Whereas the turbocharged version gets 19 around town, 27 on the highway. That one is with uh, all wheel drive though. 
Now the Ford Maverick also has two powertrain options available. The first one is a hybrid powertrain. Now that only comes in front wheel drive currently, has about 191 horsepower, I think. Um, and you can average, you know, mid to high 30s, even low 40s with that powertrain. So pretty solid. And then they have the EcoBoost powertrain, which is about what, 250 for the horsepower, I think 277 for the torque. So it's actually less powerful than the Santa Cruz powertrain. But uh, that one is paired to an eight speed automatic, just like the base Santa Cruz. So a regular torque converter automatic, not a dual clutch or anything like that. That, and that can be had uh, with all-wheel drive and you can get it with you know the tremor package which is like an off-road package as well and well this whole powertrain situation I think is the first big problem for the Santa Cruz so this Hyundai Santa Cruz and this entire line of Hyundai Santa Cruz is minus the blue one that I showed you all have one thing in common and that is the fact that they all have the turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder paired to the dual clutch automatic transmission. Actually they have two things in common and they're also not sold already. And so as cool as the turbocharged engine is in terms of the performance that it provides, it's not great for truck duties. So I had a Santa Cruz as a tester for a week and I took that off road and I can tell you the dual clutch kept doing weird stuff off road. And I'm not the first publication to find this out. There are other publications that have taken the Santa Cruz off road and they've had issues. I think one publication actually completely blew up the transmission in a Santa Cruz with the dual clutch taking it uh, off road. I, I, won't, I won't throw anyone under the bus. If you guys know who it is, you know who it is. But anyways, like it, it's, struggles with off-road stuff and then when it comes to towing that transmission also seems to be a little bit all over the place whereas the regular torque converter eight speed that is in the non-turbocharged Santa Cruz seems to do a much better job when it comes to truck duties and I think that's why the turbocharged ones are available for sale and why the regular eight speed automatic it, with the non-turbocharged engine you can't find one unless it's front wheel drive which front wheel drive vehicles just don't sell as well as all wheel drive vehicles here specifically in Utah so the point I'm trying to make is I think that that dual clutch automatic is definitely just kind of like a little bit of a black cloud over the Santa Cruz and then the other issue when it comes to powertrains is the fact that the Santa Cruz doesn't have a hybrid option. And I find this quite perplexing because the Santa Cruz is basically a Hyundai Tucson with a truck bed and you can get a hybrid in the Tucson. <laughs> you can get a hybrid with a six speed automatic. It is a dual clutch, which we just talked about how dual clutches aren't necessarily the best thing for truck duty. But regardless, you can get a hybrid powertrain in the Tucson. And so I don't know why they don't put that hybrid powertrain in the Santa Cruz. With the Ford Maverick, the hybrid version is more sold out than the EcoBoost version. Again, both versions are sold out, but the hybrid version has like an insane amount of demand. And so I find it strange that, you know, Hyundai, a manufacturer that actually makes really good hybrids, chose to not make a hybrid version of this new utility vehicle. Okay, so the Santa Cruz doesn't offer a hybrid when it should, and one of its powertrains is paired to a dual clutch, which doesn't make sense whatsoever for a utility vehicle, pickup truck, whatever you want to call the Santa Cruz, but the rest of the vehicle is great, right? Right? And I actually agree with that statement for the most part. First off, when it comes to front end styling, I think that Hyundai did an amazing job with the styling on the Santa Cruz. And then also with the side style as well. I think this is a really cool looking vehicle with the wheels and everything. I think those look great. And then you guys can see with the interior on this one. This one's a limited, it looks like. Really nice interior, actually. And it comes with good features, like you have heated and cooled seats, you've got parking assist, like tons of really nice features. And so, you know, as a just vehicle, it's actually a really good vehicle and it drives really well. Again, I had one for a week, I daily drove it, and it did fantastic. However, there are two more glaring issues with the Santa Cruz, in my personal opinion. So Hyundai markets this as an adventure vehicle. And if you don't believe me, it's even on the freaking window sticker. One of a kind sport adventure vehicle. It's on the window sticker. And so I guess let's talk about its adventure capabilities. First off, the Santa Cruz has 8.6 inches of ground clearance, which isn't necessarily groundbreaking. I see what it did there, but it's enough for a lot of off-road applications. However, it's still less than what you can get in the Ford Maverick. With the new Maverick Tremor, that has like nine and a half inches of ground clearance. And then on top of that, what you'll see with most Santa Cruzes is they'll have these larger sized wheels. Not all of them, some of them will have smaller wheels, but the bigger thing is they don't really have aggressive tires. These tires are more for street use and fuel economy rather than for off-roading and adventuring. And so I think that, you know, Hyundai should maybe do a little bit more with the tire setup. But again, that's something that's a super easy fix. Like you can easily change the wheels if you get a Santa Cruz and you can easily change the tires as well. So I, I'm not gonna knock them too much for that, but I do think like a hardcore off-road package on the Santa Cruz, like I'm saying like seriously hardcore with like almost 10 inches of ground clearance, just like the Maverick Tremor, really aggressive off 
off-road tires, all of that. I think that would go a long way, and I think it'd be really cool, actually, too. However, what I see as a much larger issue for the Santa Cruz is its abilities as a pickup truck, and it's not what you think. So when it comes to towing capacity, the Santa Cruz is actually very impressive. With the naturally aspirated engine, it can tow about 3,500 pounds. The turbocharged engine can tow about 5,000 pounds. The Maverick can only tow about 4,000 pounds max. Its base form can only tow 2,000 pounds. So the Santa Cruz is actually better than the Maverick when it comes to towing in terms of the capacity. However, in reality, with the dual clutch while towing, again, go watch the videos for yourself. Go, go do the research for yourself but from what i've seen it definitely is not the best situation again that dual clutch doesn't really like to be towing but with towing out of the way the thing that i think is probably the biggest problem for the santa cruz is actually the bed size and it's crazy how the santa cruz just needs a little bit more bed length to make a huge difference so with the santa cruz its bed length is about 48 inches the ford maverick's bed length is about 54 inches and i know that six inches doesn't sound like a lot actually it, it better sound like a lot anyways <laughs> the point that i'm trying to make here is the santa cruz's bed is just barely too small and well, if we quickly convert those inches into feet, then we get a bed length of about four feet with the Santa Cruz. And then with the Maverick, it's about four and a half feet, which again, I know that doesn't sound like a huge difference, but if you look at most half ton trucks that you see on the market, Ford F-150, Ram 1500, Chevy Silverado, they're gonna have beds that are about five and a half feet in total length. And so with the Ford Maverick, it's about just a foot shorter than what you see with most half ton trucks, where is this is a foot and a half shorter. And so it puts the Santa Cruz in an interesting predicament where the Santa Cruz actually has a pretty solid payload figure. Most Santa Cruz that I've reviewed have had a payload of like 1,200, 1,300 plus pounds. The Ford Maverick usually in the same range, sometimes a little bit more. I've seen some Mavericks with like 1,500 pounds of payload. And so this bed could actually carry quite a bit, but it just, it doesn't necessarily have the space. I mean, again, you guys can probably see here on camera. I know that camera doesn't make things perfect because like depth perception and all that, but like it's just, it's just not a big enough bed. And so literally all Hyundai has to do is just stretch out the Santa Cruz an extra six inches with the bed, make it the same size as the Maverick, and it would just increase the capability tenfold. So in summary, I wouldn't necessarily call the Santa Cruz a sales flop or a sales failure, even though I'm probably gonna have to title the video that, otherwise it's not gonna get any views. Don't hate the player, hate the YouTube game. <laughs> Anyways. I think that Hyundai could do a lot better with the Santa Cruz in terms of sales figures if they made some changes to their little utility vehicle. Because again, there is so much demand in this segment. The Santa Cruz has somewhat proven that, but the Ford Maverick has really proven that there's a ton of demand for these affordable utility vehicles. And so what Hyundai should do is offer a hybrid powertrain. They have really good hybrid powertrains. Throw one of those in the Santa Cruz. Again, Ford has proven that if you have a hybrid powertrain with the CVT, which is what every car enthusiast enthusiast hates hybrids with CVTs, people will buy it because it's economical. So like, yeah, take a hybrid powertrain with a CVT, throw it in the Santa Cruz, whatever makes the most sense. And then on top of that, get rid of the dual clutch automatic. Yes, it's quick to shift. Yes, it's exciting. But when it comes to utility vehicle or truck vehicle things, the dual clutch just doesn't do it justice. It's just not the best transmission for the job. A regular torque converter automatic would do much better with the Santa Cruz. And then lastly, or not lastly, two more things. Um, I would offer, you know, a, an aggressive off-road package with the Santa Cruz. Again, they are basically marketing this as an adventure vehicle. And so I think they should offer a crazy aggressive over the top off-road package. Even if nobody will ever take that off-road, it still would be really cool. And then finally, make the bed bigger. It doesn't have to be a massive amount. I'm talking about adding six inches to the bed length to make it the same size as the Maverick. That would add a massive amount of utility to the vehicle. And I promise you it would increase sales a huge amount. Let me know what you guys think about the Santa Cruz. Let me know what you would want to see from the Santa Cruz, especially if you're considering buying one and you didn't buy one. Why didn't you buy one? Also, in before I get the comments about the price of the Santa Cruz, and that's why it's uh, not selling as well as the Maverick, in before that, in before that. But guess what? A fully loaded Maverick costs about the same amount of money now, because I reviewed a Tremor and it was over 40000